Blumenfeld's work is developed in the studio. He is a studio photographer. This is the first show where we are really showing the whole bridge, I mean the whole spectrum of his visual works, from the drawings to the fashion. Erwin Blumenfeld was born in Berlin in 1897 and he grew up in a bourgeois Jewish German family. He went to school until he was 16 because his father died in 1913 and he started an apprenticeship in a woman's outfit store. During that time, he got to meet people from the Berlin avant-garde, people who were called themselves Dadaist. So he was always interested in words, and you can see it in the early collages as well, because he was using original photographs, printed photographs, and his own text for these collages. He was really fascinated by Charlie Chaplin and in fact he also signed a proclamation by the Dadaists where they were against the censorship of Charlie Chaplin films in Germany. The drawing for him I think was the most direct media. You just have a piece of paper and you do a sketch. You're observing something and you do a sketch. I think photography and the drawings were really a different medias, but were, he did it a parallel. A lot of the drawings were done in Amsterdam already when he had a star for women's handbags. So his customers were women. He started taking pictures of these women, but he really started working in the dark room. And this became his big, big uh, obsession and fascination. You know? So he was not interested in really representing the real. He was interested in image making, in interpreting, in experimenting. He was using for the Hitler montage a skull and a reproduced portrait of Hitler. The title dictator doesn't refer to a person, not to Hitler, not to Mussolini or something. It's just a basic address to a dictatorship. His great desire was to go to Paris. In 36, he moved first alone, but then with the family. He got a contract for Vogue in Paris uh, with the help of uh, Cecil Beaton. He was a studio photographer and he hardly didn't go outside to do fashion. And after he had done the series, which was successful, he went to the United States in 1939 and he came back with a contract by Harper's Bazaar. They wanted him to report from the French fashion scene. In 1940, he uh, already uh, had to stop and uh, got into French camps. In solitary confinement for nine months and condemned to death under the most inhumane living conditions. 
I began learning how to die. Color photography was far more advanced in the applied field in the United States at that time. So he really got into color and he experimented in front of the camera but also in the dark room. He was free to pick up the ideas from the late 30s to do it, transfer it into color. His work became more graphic, a little bit more illustrative. It's probably also due to the American context. The selection of self-portraits which we have in the show is a very good document of what he did, his spectrum of using photography. So it's really playing around with the possibilities of photography to challenge the media, to find out about the potential of the media from the camera side and from the darkroom side.